Today we're going to look at a lesser known divisibility rule, divisibility by 17. And in order to appropriately describe this rule, we need a bit of a crazy transformation. So let's define that transformation. So we'll call it t. It'll have an input of a natural number and an output of an integer. And what you do is you remove the ones digit from the input, and then you subtract five times this one digit from whatever's left over. And the result is that 17 divides the original number, if and only if 17 divides the transformed number. Okay, so let's start off with some examples of what's going on here so we can get a handle on this transformation. So let's do t of 17. Well, 17 is most definitely divisible by 17, so I think this is a good place to start. So we'll remove seven, leaving us with one, and then we'll subtract five times seven. So remove the ones digit, subtract five times the ones digit. So that'll give us one minus 35, which is negative 34, which is very clearly negative two times 17. So that's a multiple of 17. And now it's pretty clear why we need to end up at the integers here. And in fact, we could start at the integers if we wanted to. I'll let you guys look at some of those examples if you'd like to. So let's maybe do t of 85. So notice that's equal to 17 times 5. So we'll remove that ones digit, which is, which is 5, leaving us with 8 minus 5 times 5. That gives us 8 minus 25, which is negative 17. So that's equal to negative 1 times 17, still a multiple of 17. Let's maybe look at something that's not a multiple of 17. Let's maybe do t of 43. So that's not a multiple of 17. So if we apply our transformation, we'll have 4 minus 3 times 5. So that's going to be 4 minus 15, but 4 minus 15 will be negative 11. That's not a multiple of 17. So we started with a non-multiple of 17 and we ended with a non-multiple of 17. Now maybe let's look at a bigger example. But in order to do that, let's notice that 17 times 234 is indeed equal to 3978. And now let's do our transformation to that number. So t of 3978 will be 397 minus 5 times 8. So remove the ones digit and then subtract 5 times it from what's left. So this gives us 357, given that 5 times 8 is 40, but 357 can be checked to be 21 times 17. So we got another multiple of 17. Okay, so now that we've done some of these examples, let's see how the proof goes. Now we're ready for our proof. And I'll just say proof of this magenta box thing down here. So let's start with the forward direction. So let's suppose that 17 divides n. So what does that mean? That's the same thing as saying that n is a multiple of 17. So we could perhaps write it as 17 times m, where little m is a natural number. And now let's do our transformation. But in order to do our transformation, we'd like to write n in a certain format so that we can do this action maybe nice and efficiently. So let's do this. We will write n as 10 times x plus y, where x is some sort of non-negative integer, and then y is just playing the role of the ones digit. So that means it comes from the set 0, 1, up to 9. Great. So now it's pretty clear that y is playing the role of the ones digit. And then from here, let's note that t evaluated at n is equal to, well, if we remove this ones digit, we'll be left with x. And now we subtract five times that ones digit, so five times y. Now, looking at this, it doesn't seem super helpful yet. And we can't use anything about the divisibility of our original number by 
17. That is unless we maybe multiply this by 10 so we can recreate our original number in this current setup. So let's do that. Let's say this yellow arrow is multiplying this thing by 10. So we have 10 times t of n is equal to 10x minus 50 times y. Okay. But now what I'd like to do is maybe add a y in and subtract a y. So we'll add y and subtract y, and we'll write this as 10x plus y, and then minus 51y. But let's notice that 10x plus y is exactly our starting number, which we called capital N. So that's equal to 17 times m. And then 51 is itself a multiple of 17. It's 17 times 3. So this is minus 17 times 3y. So we can clearly factor a 17 out of this whole thing, and we have m minus 3y. But let's notice that means that 17 divides 10 times t of n. So let's bring that over here. So we have 17 divides 10 times t of n. But then, since 17 is a prime number, this splits into two cases. The first case is 17 divides t of n, and the second case is 17 divides 10. So that's a defining property of the prime numbers. Notice that 17 definitely does not divide 10, so that leaves us with the only possibility, which is 17 must divide t of n. So that gives us our forward direction. So now let's work through the reverse direction, and this is gonna go essentially the same. One of the steps that we do will be a little bit different, but the heart is still there. So let's maybe suppose that 17 divides t of n, and we'll also write n as 10x plus y, just as we did before. Okay, so let's notice that that means that 17 divides x minus 5 times y. That's because that's exactly t of n. So that means that x minus 5 times y is equal to 17 times k for some natural number k. Now I'll take motivation from the fact that last time I had to multiply by 10, and that's exactly what we'll do here as well. Let's take this and multiply it by 10. So that's gonna give us 10x and then minus 50y is equal to 17 times k prime, where that k prime is simply 10 times k, but I think writing it like this makes it a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now we're gonna add a y in here, and we'll also subtract a y. Again, sort of building the same thing that we saw before, and now let's combine these to see what we have. So this 10x plus y is equal to n based off our setup, and then we have minus 51y, so that's gonna be minus 17 times 3y equals 17 times k prime. But now we can see that n is in fact equal to 17 times 3y plus k prime. But that's exactly what we need for 17 to divide n, and that finishes off this reverse direction. And that's a good place to stop.